This video is sponsored by Bityard. With over 400 cryptocurrencies to choose from on their spot exchange, dozens of USDT pairs for futures trading, perpetual coin futures, trade commodities like gold, silver and oil, Forex, and major indices like NASDAQ. You can buy crypto from Bityard with over 50 different fiat currencies using Visa, MasterCard, Google or Apple Pay. If you like, you can use their copy trade facility, follow other traders who will execute trades on your behalf, or become a copy trader yourself. So if you want a bit of that, click the link in the description. Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's have a look at EOS then, shall we? We've not looked at EOS in a little while, not made a, a dedicated video for it for a while to be honest with you. And there's a there's a good reason for that. That's the reason. <laughs> it's not like uh, it's not like it was in the past. You know, when I first made videos about EOS, you know, leading into this bull run, it had a very good setup, you know, long consolidation, uh, a breakout and accumulation, and then on top of that, on the weekly we had a nice conversion baseline cross after a dump as well, which was basically, we've got to turn the itchy cloud on to see that, it basically suggested that we are in for some serious gains. We've got that cross over here, so we've got a breakout of the console, of the accumulation, uh, breakdown, golden cross, not golden cross, the um, a conversion baseline cross for a continuation of a trend. And from that dump, this is where the last time I bought EOS was. I bought it over here, and uh, it did quite well. Took some profit off over here, but you know that feels like a long time ago. Since then, it's just basically been you know thrown into the dirt here. But interestingly enough, if we go to the four hourly chart, um, it's been on a consistent tear up actually. If we work this out from you know this low to where it's gone up already, just short of a 40% move. And again, for a top, uh, is it a top cap anymore? Probably, probably not, is it? We call it a medium. I don't know what it what it's classed as anymore. There's always a, an enormous amount of trading volume on it though. Um, you know, despite you know making significant lows uh, throughout this retracement. Look, I think that a lot of the interest has come into this because it's been specifically low. They also have the bullish exchange, which I think is going to be adding some volume to it. There is a rumor <clears throat> that Binance has tried to keep the price down as they see it as a competitor. But you know how the internet talks. Can't really take that particularly seriously, but it wouldn't surprise me. So on the, uh, on the I suppose on the short term, over the last couple of months, we've had this consolidation, quite a steep one. Um, probably not measured from there, but you could measure it from either of these places. Either way that you measure it, <clears throat> we've found we found a breakout over the last few uh, few days really so the breakout of the consolidation like a lot of these coins have got including the total market cap this this actually reflects the way that the total market cap looks also the nasdaq as well looks this way many coins look like this um, and uh, in fact many coins uh, don't look quite as good as this on the on on the four hourly you know consistent uptrend getting picked up on the center of the bollinger band or the 21 exponential whichever you want to play it and then even now still at this at this point now getting picked up on the 10 exponential on the four hourly we're finding a very clear toppy vibe going on here on the four hourly though it has to be said two dollars fifty uh, give or take it looks like it's ready for a pullback which is fine it's absolutely no problem at all it's, it's done more than you anyone would ever expect from eos but with the setup on the four hourly with the golden cross looking quite so you know it's quite steep here actually it's quite steep moving averages crossing up above this point here which is the two dollars thirty five uh, which is where we've had some areas uh, recently of uh, of resistance stroke support uh, but more more interestingly this is where the the biggest base was was built you know during the consolidation also in the accumulation so the main thing is is that yeah yeah we get a rejection from here that's fine we've got the golden cross on the four hourly we want these moving averages to cross up above this two dollars and thirty seven two dollars forty kind of zone if we can hold above there then there's a very good chance that we do end up accumulating in in this range and uh, that would be how we did it before now previous performance doesn't necessarily mean it's going to behave in the same way but if there's one thing that EOS likes to do it's uh, hang around in these particular levels look this area here which is more or less where we've just tagged back into now for a long time has always been a relatively good area of support um, obviously not recently but prior to then it's been a good area of support <clears throat> there's one thing that EOS likes to do which is uh, turn support into uh, turn to resistance into support and I suppose vice versa so if we're looking for this to start to perk up again and it might you know the operative word is is might the four hour is good the you know the daily is not quite so good at all uh, but it's, it's still not terrible you know, as far as you know digging itself out of the dirt basically 
We're looking for this to basically hang around in here and then finally flip this resistance, which is uh, $3.70, into support, moving up to $5, and so on and so on and so on. So this is basically the uh, the way that we're looking for this to behave. And, you know, maybe go on to make new all-time highs. Remember, the all-time high for EOS was between $20 and $24. So there's a long way to go. So we're talking, you know, effectively a 10x from this particular level right now. Now, EOS has always been a bit of a wild card, right? Uh, one of those coins that, you know, people didn't didn't really uh, it didn't bode well when I was making videos of it back here and I said look it's all to do with setups and we had a setup and it worked we don't really have a setup here we just got hopium but that's okay to have hopium especially if you're me and you're still holding on to a lot of EOS that, that you know you, you obviously you're selling on the way up but I always keep some do you know what I mean I always keep some and uh, so obviously I, I own it so I, I, I like to sell myself hopium uh, obviously uh, but just for the record, there isn't any signals on the daily. Not yet, there's not anyway. And there's not likely to be either for a little while. And if there were to be, it wouldn't be a continuation of a, of a trend signal. Uh, it would be a pump signal, if anything. So we're looking for natural progression, probably dictated by the overall market. Now we are turning up over here on the MACD on the, uh, on the, on the weekly. There's a lot of altcoins, smaller cap coins, I have to say, <clears throat> mid to small cap coins that have this kind of read, showing that the, there is divergence forming now and momentum sort of slowly changing to the up, uh, which would be for a longer period. So this isn't a bad thing. This is quite good to see this on the weekly. This is like potentially early days for what could be the bottom of a consistent uptrend that goes on maybe, you know, for for, for the rest of the year. And it's difficult to say because we're all looking at Bitcoin wondering what the hell Bitcoin wants to do. But I'm in favor of the, uh, you know, in the concept that the Bitcoin is accumulating within this effectively this range, you know, from as low as 32,000 to as high as 46,000. This area is going to be sort of the range. If anyone's around back in the olden days, this is like between the 8,000 to 12,000 range, basically, that kind of accumulation range that, that finally, when it did start to break out, it went crazy and went straight through its all-time high and then beyond, just went crazy. So I'm thinking Bitcoin's looking at the same kind of, uh, you know, that same kind of accumulation. And again, we don't have a, a positive cross on the MACD, but it's, it's diverging. It's all diverging. And uh, this goes hand in hand for a lot of altcoins. Not all. The top caps actually don't really look like this. EOS is one of the, uh, the the larger cap coins that actually has that positive tick on the histogram already. And again, we can't look at that and go, whoa, positive tick on the histogram. Yeah, there's a few out there. I mean, ICP's got a different read altogether. ICP's actually been uh, positive for a very long period of time with huge bullish divergence. But, you know, I've made videos about that uh, last week or earlier on this week. So we don't need to go on about that. So there are some interesting things taking place with altcoins. And, you know, the unpopular ones like EOS and ICP and maybe even XRP as well, you know, these, yeah, they're, they're not dead. You know that, right? They're not dead. It's, uh, yeah, I think on crypto Twitter and crypto YouTube, people like to pump the things that have only just come out, you know, Baby Doge or whatever it is. And of course, these sort of things make loads of money. That's why we do on our streams, we like to look at shit coins on Q coin things because they make loads of money. But they're not the only ways to make money out of this. I mean, if we're going to apply TA, we like old coins with old charts. So EOS has been around for a little while now. Yeah, you know, it's been around since the last cycle. XRP has been around for a longer than that. Um, and if there's one thing that we can gain from old coins, it might not be massive gains, but it can be consistency and it can be reliable TA because you know all indicators are based around price, volume, and time. So we need three components like that to give it, you know, some kind of, I suppose, you know, seal of approval as to what we're seeing. You can't trade something that's only been out a few weeks. Not really. You know, it's immature. It acts immature. So uh, things like EOS and XRP, you know, they might not be millionaire starter kits or anything like that, but it doesn't mean you can't make some serious money. You know, I was saying this back down here, what we made a 3x. No no big deal, a tasty 3x, that's okay. And at the moment now, the way that this is looking and the way that the market feels to me, the way that market looks like it wants to head, um, I, I would expect EOS to uh, to go on to another tear up, um, but not any time soon. <laughs> So we are looking to effectively make the most of these lows and look for retests based on that four hourly. This does look like a rejection in play at the moment, but it might not be. If it's not, then we'll power on through to $2.70 without too much of an issue. Right, I'm going to leave with you there, uh, but uh, not $2.70, what am I talking about? $3 flat. Right, we're going to leave with you there though. Thanks for watching, hope you have a nice day and take it easy.